Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful people of this beautiful planet. Welcome back. It is Lee Godlock. My name is Eric Flynn, a little Han Solo on today's epi as unfortunately at the forefront of the headlines in the LCK. Again, second straight match day because obviously we had a couple of days off. We're not talking about the games on the Rift. We are talking about DDoS attacks happening to the LCK. Didn't even get to finish the T1 versus Fox series as the LCK had to put a pause slash delay on game two of this series. Don't know if it's going to get going the next day or, I mean, I assume that's the case. Maybe they'll be playing from home again, much like the Bro Kwangdong series ended up playing out. But this is slowly becoming a little bit more of a concern. There were multiple pauses. The teams agreed to at least finish that first game uh, before halting the broadcast on day two. LCK releasing a tweet message of their own, basically saying the attacks compared to the last time have changed and evolved and made it impossible for them to keep up. I've seen people saying maybe an IP address is leaked. And obviously this has been an issue in Korean esports, not even just the LCK. You've been seeing popular streamers getting uh, DDoSed and other things and just the Korean server as a whole has been attack, uh, the victim of a lot of these attacks. I know Mark and I mentioned, don't let it happen during the T1 series because the fans will lose their minds. T1 saying they're going to refund fans in the T1 zone and the LCK also been very good about refunds for the last couple of days, but something's got to get sorted out here because you can't have two, three, four, five, six straight days being impacted. All of a sudden you're talking about the impact this will have on the season as a whole. So you got to imagine another straight day of these issues and the LCK is going to be pulling in a whole lot more resources to get things sorted out. I, I got to say, I hate to say it because you love when international events are taking place in Korea, but with these issues continuing to pop up, probably a good thing MSI and Worlds will not be in South Korea this year because... This is the last thing you want to be dealing with in these marquee international events. It's the last thing you want to be dealing with in the middle of the regular season either. But uh, the issues continue there. The one thing we are blessed with after or when something like this is going on for the LCK is they are the absolute best at filling content. Huge shout out to Who Are You Man. This is the greatest segment maybe in the history of LOL Esports. Uh, these... It's basically the mass singer, but the mass player with all these X or not X current LCK pros playing some ARAM type fun matches with masks on their head, and then the cast of Barrel, Huni, and Tara, and all the other LCK hosts. Gotta guess who it is. If you haven't watched some of these segments, they're absolutely hilarious. Uh, you gotta check them out. So that is the one main positive that we've gotten uh, from these delays, pauses, and cancellations in the LCK. Some of these little segments are better than actual matches at times, looking at Yu Kuang Gong versus the bros. Uh, but we did at least get some games in the LCK. Gen G versus Kuang Dong did wrap up. Uh, they were able to finish their 2-0 series. Mark and I were kind of hoping maybe this would be some bounce back action for Kuang Dong, but did not end up being the case. Uh, I mean, the first game there was never really much of a competition. I think it ended up being 14 to one in the kill score over to Gen G. Some more Azir duty for Chovy. And really, as we saw today, this is now becoming a two horse race for the player of the split, basically, as Chovy and Faker keep going back and forth, slowly separating themselves as the top two from the rest of the pack. Uh, we did get to see Canyon on Fiddlesticks in this game. That's Always fun when we get to see Canyon play something off meta. It feels like it's been a long time that we've been waiting for him to be able to do that. And finally, we're able to do so. But game two, Kwang Dong, they did enough for you to feel good early on. Like they got a 5k gold lead. You'd think, okay, bad series back to back against Bro, but we got something positive. We got some momentum going against Gen G. And then they had absolutely no idea what to do. It was just. Genji finds a pick here, a pick here, another pick here, a couple of kills, and then all of a sudden this, what was a zero and four, I think at one point, Twisted Fate for Keen, 
eventually starts picking up, racking up some kills, and we know the TF passive means he's just swimming in gold, even if he is at a deficit, because it doesn't matter if it's the LPL or the LCK. We are seeing these AD carry TFs, especially when they're solo lanes, getting absolutely camped to oblivion. That was the case in point for Keen in that second game, but as I mentioned, he did bounce back, and pretty quickly after Genji grabs that bear, they're able to close this game out, but both MVPs going the way of Chovy as Genji rolls onwards to that 10 and 1 start and Kwang Dong back to the drawing board. It doesn't matter if it's the bros or Genji. It's a three game series loss for them. And we didn't finish this T1 Fox series, as I mentioned, but we did at least get a single game. And it was, look at this, a little bit more TF action. This time it's Zeus getting camped on the TF in this first game, which did eventually have some pause issues. I think it was uh, Wolf who completely jinxed it uh, on the broadcast saying things are going swimmingly. No pause issues, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, they eventually do end up coming through. But uh, it's a 21-game win streak extender for Faker on that Corky, which is an absolutely ludicrous stat in an ocean of insane stats for the GOAT in the mid lane. But yeah, 21 in a row on that quirky pick. And as I mentioned or alluded to, he picked up MVP in this one. It's 800 MVP points for Faker, 900 for Chovy at the very top of the LCK table. Obviously, that is going to be an exciting storyline uh, to see play out as we begin to wrap up this regular season action. Um, Fox, even though they had a gold deficit and they started this Baron, this was owner absolutely just robbing it on the Viego and then T1 cleans up the fight from there. Even when Fox was quote unquote in control, they were never fully in control. It never felt like T1 was actually in jeopardy of dropping this game. They were just kind of waiting for that moment. They eventually find it around the Baron to close out that first game. Maybe uh, the break or the delay in when this series gets played again will mean Fox gets a bounce back. We know they're in the middle of this absolutely insane gauntlet of scheduling where they're going against the very best teams in the LCK back to back to back to back to back to back. To back. Genji, Hanwa, and T1 in some kind of order, but uh, T1 mostly business as usual for them. But again, the real story here is the DDoS attacks continuing, and I mean... The LCK basically saying these attacks were ever evolving and coming in different ways. We weren't prepared for it. I'm surprised they even let out a statement like that saying they just straight up weren't prepared. But you know that they're going to be sending a whole lot more resources because this is this is unacceptable for the players to have to go through. It's unacceptable for these fans. You heard that story of that bro fan who went on Sunday, waited six hours, didn't even get to see his team play. I know you get refunded, but you can't refund time when my man is spending six hours there and T1 fans are going to be even more vocal, even if they are getting refunded. They came for the event to watch T1 play. Yes, they get a single game. I don't know if game two is going to be played at home for both of these squads, but just disappointing across the board. And you hope and pray that this gets sorted out soon, let alone well before playoffs. Imagine a playoff series actually being... Uh, influenced or impacted by this i know people are screaming to play on LAN, and we just all kind of assumed a lot of the time that you're playing on LAN, but it is this tournament realm that's separate from the korean servers i believe pretty much every major region is playing on a tournament realm that's separate from the main uh server that everyone's playing on so lots of issues for the lck to figure out they're going to be throwing a lot of manpower and resources and money to make sure that this gets sorted out soon because nobody wants to be sitting for multiple hours through all the pausing just for matches to be delayed but we'll keep you updated when this t1 fox series does resume and hopefully we're issue scot-free for the rest of this week in lck action but that is it today for league unlock my name is eric you people stay beautiful as always and thank you so much for watching